Our sun once again has the X factor, and Parker Solar Probe gets bullseyed by a big solar storm. Those stories and more in the news this week. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville.com dot edu slash swen. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. All eyes are on the sun this week. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we do have a lot of active regions in Earth view, but all our focus is on region 3182. We knew this region was coming even before it rotated into view. In fact, on the 3rd, it fired a big solar flare that Stereo A saw and a big solar storm, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. Meanwhile, we knew it was coming. This is actually regions 3162 and 63 from clear back in December, if you can remember. We followed this through the sun's far side, through the helioseismology uh, monitor from JSOC, and we actually could watch as the regions 3162 and 63 rotated to the sun's far side. They continued to grow even through the far side, and so we knew when this region was going to rotate back into view, it could give us some decent shows, and it did not disappoint. On the 6th, wham, right there, it's hardly rotated into view, and it launches an X-1-2 flare. Now, there's not a solar storm with this, with this uh, particular flare, and the flare was reasonably fast, but we did get some decent radio bursts from it, up into about the 100 gig, uh, megahertz range, and so we're still going to be paying attention to it. You can actually see all the electrical activity going on as it's continuing to rotate into view, but we do have a decent risk right now for X-class flares because likely that's what's going to continue. Now, as we take a look at our sun's far side, this is stereo A, and it's looking at the sun just a little bit from the side. We can actually capture that uh, event back on the third. Wham! Right there, you see that big, big flare. We don't know the class. It was likely an X class. This was, again, from region 3182, right prior to it rotating into Earth view. But here's the thing. You can actually watch when that flare happens. You can watch it kind of evacuate all of this overlying stuff. And that is the solar storm that was launched. That solar storm has now hit Parker Solar Probe. When we take a look at the models, you can actually see it hit Parker Solar Probe, bullseyed it right there about on the 4th. So we've been paying attention to this, but the thing is, is that when it evacuates that much uh, overlying field, it typically means that you're not going to have another solar storm launch from it. So Aurora photographers, if you're waiting for this region to rotate into the Earth strike zone, well, it may not deliver a solar storm for us. It may just be a bunch of these fast radio blackouts. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders and those in dealing with space traffic and launch just realize we might have issues with up to about a R3 radio blackout over this next week and possibly two weeks before this region rotates out of view. Now taking a look at the impacts from the X-class flare on radio traffic here on Earth's day side, on the 6th of January, right about a few minutes before 1 o'clock, you can see the big red really beginning to rise over the Asian Pacific. This is the impact from that X-class flare on an R3 level radio blackout. And about 10 minutes later, we really start getting reports of the amateur radio bands uh, being degraded. You can see all of the radio communications, all these, these colored lines really begin to kind of fade out and disappear, especially on Earth's day side. And the peak of this uh, particular uh, R3 radio blackout occurred about uh, 110, and it lasted easily for about 10 to 15 minutes, but about 120, things really started beginning to come back a little bit, and it not only impacted all of the HF bands uh, on Earth's day side, but it also, from the Learmonth radio tower or radio observatory, it actually peaked into the hundreds of megahertz. So we actually got some decent radio noise from this particular solar flare. And finally, by about 1.30, things really started coming back. And by 1.45, uh, that's 45 minutes, almost an hour later, finally radio communication begins to fully recover. 
Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the full moon phase on our way to a third quarter, and by the 11th, the moon will still be about 83% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you're going to have this bright companion, so you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we've been ramping down from some fast solar wind that we had from a coronal hole that had rotated in through the Earth strike zone, but sadly it has kind of been underwhelming. Now we do have another coronal hole from the north that will give us some more fast wind and possibly boost this a little bit. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled to possibly active conditions, but we do have up to about a 30% chance of a major storm. I know that's a bit of a spread, but that's just because things are so unsettled settled and it's kind of hard to tell whether or not we're going to get much impact because that coronal hole is kind of it's pretty far north so it's hard it's really hard to know but uh roar photographers at high latitudes you could get a sporadic show likely is going to be underwhelming but you know if you're dedicated feel free to chase now if you're a mid-latitude or photographers well sorry to say we're basically sitting at unsettled conditions now we do have up to about a 20 percent chance of active conditions but again it's probably not going to last that long it's going to be probably pretty sporadic so so we might just need to sit this out, or things could change very quickly if Region 3182 fires an Earth-directed solar storm. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we are dealing with Region 3182 that is now fully rotated into Earth view, and it has given us an X-class flare, which means an R3-level radio blackout. This is why the chart is orange. Over the next few days, NOAA has given us up to about a 70% chance of M-class flares and even a 30% chance of X-class flares, which means we have anything from an R1 to an R3-level radio blackout possible. And this is easily going to continue over the rest of this week and possibly into next week as we watch this region continue to rotate uh, across the sun's disk. Now, this also means that if you are an aviator, please pay attention to the ICAO advisories. We are getting space weather advisories out regarding the solar flares when they happen and the radio blackouts when they happen. And this applies to both uh, the aviation industry and drone pilots. So please pay, pay attention to the advisories as they continue to come out. Now, nice thing is that we do have solar flux still in the triple digits. So you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, if in between the radio blackouts and all the noise on the bands, at least on Earth's day side, you're going to get some decent radio propagation. But you know what? You might try the Earth's night side because that's probably going to be a bit quieter for you. Now, when we switch to radiation storms, well, we do have a, a little bit of a, a risk right now, and that is due to the fact that we have multiple big flare players on the Earth-facing disk. NOAA is giving us about a 5% chance of an S1 level. So if you are a frequent flyer, and this does include air crew, and you're flying especially on Earth's day side, or if you're flying at high latitudes, and high altitudes. Be aware the sun is quite active this week, and it's likely going to continue into next week, so please just remain vigilant. So the space weather this week is all about big solar flares. We have region 3182 that has finally rotated into Earth view, and sure enough, it launched an X 1.2 flare, but no solar storm was launched with it. Now, this region did launch a solar storm back on the 3rd, but that solar storm was not Earth-directed. It actually went toward Parker Solar Probe. So Aurora photographers, as you're watching this region rotate into view, well, it looks like you're just going to have to sit this one out and just deal with the small bit of fast solar wind we're getting. Now, perhaps this region will change its mind and launch something towards Earth, but I'm not exactly sure it will, so you might just have to kind of sit and watch the paparazzi bulbs fire a bit. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you're kind of on the opposite side of this. You're looking at things like, oh my goodness, there's so much noise and we're dealing with radio blackouts and oh my gosh, it's so busy. Well, yeah, that's going to be the, continue to be the story. We have anything from an R1 to an R3 level radio blackout that is on the menu. So deal with that on Earth's day side. The one nice thing is that uh, these re these Solar flares seem to be pretty short in duration because they're not launching solar storms with them. So that at least the radio blackouts don't last all that long. Now, if you are a, a, a GPS user, or even if you're in the aviation industry or a drone pilot, be aware these radio blackouts, they are not causing radio blackouts up into the gigahertz range as of yet. It looks like it's just sitting at around 100 or so megahertz, but that could change at any moment. And yet these radio blackouts are significant enough that they 
they could cause issues for you. So if you're, especially if you're a pilot, uh, please take a look at the ICAO ad advisories that are coming out uh, anytime we have these solar flares. Pay attention to them quite often because this could be a busy couple weeks. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.